going to be doing a kind of a, a walkthrough on the BBT Multiminer today. Uh, real quick, this is going to be on 13 card uh, Zotac 1050 Ti uh, setup we got here. And we are going to do one on another AMD setup, but I'm going to get through this one today. Uh, and tonight, we're, I'm actually running with BBT Todd. We're going to be going to Micro Center today. And we're picking up a all the parts for a 2990 Threadripper 2 build. So we're going to try to do that live stream tonight. We're going to do a, a, uh, a setup and a stream to, you know, just cradle to grave build. I think uh, we haven't done one in a while. Um, and we're going to build a, what a 64 core uh, setup looks like. I think it'd be kind of cool. So ahead of that, I'm going to try to get some, uh, the XMR miner and stuff working good and optimized and ready for it. That way, when we, after we get the build, we'll see how the 2990 does with, uh, some CPU mining on 64 core or technically 32 cores. Cause you don't really mine on the, the virtuals, but anyways, Enough of all that fun jazz. Let's get this set up. Let's get right into it. I'm going to take this over. Now, I, I changed the camera position on the GoPro to where you guys can see the multimeter a lot better, a lot cleaner. So you guys should be able to see the current wattage output uh, on the multimeter right now. And then what we're looking at. So this machine right now is running about 850 watts of usage uh, for the 13 cards, which is actually a pretty good pretty pretty decent it's under a thousand watts for 13 gpus let's get this moved over let's go over to the computer video now i've let this go for overnight it's been running for about uh 17 18 hours and we're we're at about 57 mega hash right now on this entire rig. So right now, a uh, 13 card Zotac 1050 Ti, essentially with stock settings, is running the 57 mega hash. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this real quick. And for the folks that are just joining, the BBT Multiminer can be picked up for free. It's a free release at Bitsby Trippin. Nope, I'm using the wrong keyboard here, folks. From the website, Miss BBT just linked. Bitsbytrippin.io. So right here, I did tweet it. I did not put it in Discord though. Okay. So we'll zoomed in a little bit here. Let's we'll zoom out a little bit here. So right down here, the multi miner. If you guys click this, brings you into this, and then you can just click the download button to GitHub. And then what we're going to be looking at right now is this. Uh, when you download this zip file, there's a good YouTube video on how to do this. You will more than likely have to make an exception in your antivirus um, to create the exception. I have not updated this uh, yet, but if it auto updates, it will nuke part of the multiminer. So you need to go into your virus protection here and you need to go into your settings, your threat settings here. And then you're gonna wanna go into add an Inclus, you don't want to exclude exclusion for the multi miner. So this is on the desktop is where I copied it, and I'm just going to exclude that folder and yes, and that's going to add that um, exclusion in there. So when Windows Defender updates, it will not nuke a couple of the miners that are included in this these folders here. Um, the Crypto Knight Miner, and I think it's the Crypto Knight, and there's one more, maybe the Evermore Miner. It goes in here, and it nukes the XM... Uh, actually, it might have already done it. It looks like it did. Yeah, I don't see... Oh, there's that one. I don't know if it nuked the uh, AMD version of it. Looks like it did. I don't see it in there. 
what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to keep We're going to add one more exclusion here. You guys are going to get to see this in real time right now. So we're going to go into virus protection. You guys get to see it twice. It's actually good for you guys. And you come into the virus protections and settings. And we're going to add one more folder to this exclusion because I'm going to re-download it again. And this is good to know for if you, if when we do an update for the multi-miner, how you can, uh, keep your settings. So we're just going to put it in the minor folder here again. We're going to select this folder, hit OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that whatever's in the minor folder, where the minor folder went, minor folder here is the my info. You right click on that and as long as you have notepad plus plus download it, it's a rich editor, so that way it sets, you know, has your line numbers here, and it just formats the uh, the bat file to where you can actually read it. Um, we want to keep these settings because we want all of our address wallets and the the set worker name and all that stuff. We want to keep that. So, if we're going to update this, we want to just copy this file out. We're going to put it in the root of this folder real quick. Paste. And then I'm going to nuke this folder. Okay, so we nuked it. We're going to go back to bitsbytrippin.io. And we're going to go on, and scroll down here, read more info. And then we're going to click this download to GitHub. It'll take you to the GitHub address. And then we're going to re download this again. It's actually downloading. You can see down here in the taskbar that the green box is getting bigger. It's right here. If you hit Control J, you can actually see it in X, in uh, Chrome it actually downloading. So if you're ever curious of like what your download speed is and whatever, like right now my download speed is horrible for some reason. My kids must be updating a game or something. So it's actually downloading pretty slow from GitHub. Doesn't look like I'm dropping any frames, so at least the upload's not affected. But we're gonna download this, we're gonna unzip it into that minor folder, and then I'm gonna copy back the myinfo.bat, which is what you're always gonna wanna retain. And from this point on, we're gonna try to make sure that we hold whatever code updates and whatever coins we add to the multi-miner. And as we update minor versions and all that kind of stuff, I'm gonna try to keep it to where your settings are always to where you can copy and paste them. That way it saves you some time when you're downloading a new miner. Now we're gonna extract this into a different folder. We wanna put that back into that folder that's excluded, which we'll just keep it in the miner folder here. We're gonna select that and we're gonna hit extract. And that's gonna just unzip everything back in that folder again. That way we know we have all the miners and there's nothing that the antivirus or anything took away. Um, we're gonna skip the replacement of that file because now it's already in there because we already had that file in there. We don't want to replace it. So now when we double click this, the first time it's going to come up and it sets this as an unknown publisher. So you have to hit that more info and you have to hit run anyway. And now there we go. It fires back up and the multi miner tool is actually reading um, essentially that bat file that you launch it lets this all get set up and created, you know, it just, prints this screen for you and then just we've done all the back end stuff for you um, to where you can just as long as you have your address in there for the particular current cryptocurrency you just click the number that you want to mine so today the main thing what we were going to look at is let me go back over to this main camera here so what we're going to be looking at today is this 13 card um, we've built a few of these, uh, 13 cards, Zotac 1050 TIs. These are pretty cheap cards these days. Um, we'll have some links down on the YouTube video that we upload from this for all the parts of this rig. So if you're watching this live, I will have that included. Like Twitch is real weird. Like I have to like edit the main page every time I go live to on my like dashboard to put all the links and stuff for this build. Um, and since if I'm going live multiple times a day, then all that information goes away. So 
YouTube's where we're going to store a lot of the content and we'll have all the links to the different parts. So if you're building something like this, if it makes sense for you and your power situation, um, or you're just new to mining and you want to start with one rig and this is a cheap solution for you, then you'll have uh, at least a parts list that you can go to um, and make sure that you're getting the same kind of consistency card wise and riser wise and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, this is their, their no six pin, no eight pin, nothing like that. These are, you know, um, let me go into a, the close up view Man, that is right up on there and we'll use that camera to kind of show. walk around and talk so right now at idle it's using about 67 watts um we'll go back to the computer video this uh machine is a pentium g4400 3.3 gigahertz uh not a a uh real fast processor don't need a lot for a real fast processor when you're mining um i got a four gig stick of Corsair ballistics in it. It's got a 256, or no, it's a 120, sorry, 120 gig Sandus solid state. Canada's running Windows. And then these are the 1050 Ti's from Zotac. And then you can see all 13 of them in there. The built in graphics card that's on the, on the motherboards, what we're using right now to display. Uh, that's the HD 510 that's built into the G4400, um, and it's part of the motherboard. And then the 1050 Ti's are, you know, the GPU is 1 through 13, which you can see in there. And then if we look at task or the uh, device manager, you can see in here, no exclamations, all the base drivers are loaded. And there's what 13 cards look like in a device manager running. So some folks have not seen that. Some folks are new to mining. Some folks are just checking in and seeing that it is possible right now with 13 cards. It used to be a pretty hard limit on eight. Um, and then Windows after version 1709 made it possible that new drivers could be loaded and you could go past that. Our record right now is 21 GPUs in Windows. There is a video on YouTube if you have not seen that. If you look up 21 GPU mining, something to that effect, you Google that, you'll find our video on that. And that's actually a pretty cool live stream. Did it live, built it live, and was able to dual mine with it live. Um, it sounded like an airplane was taken off. It was a real cool video. Highly recommend. It's about 50,000 views on it. Um, it's pretty cool fun. So shows what was in the realm of possible with Windows. Nobody's building those right now, um, but maybe one day we'll revisit it when the market rescinds or stops rescinding and goes back up. Um, so now these are the budget builds. So let's go ahead and start. You guys, uh, I tweeted out and showed you right when you started watching this. The Raven coin. The which one? Uh, there are so 1803. So 1803 gets flaky. So anything after 1709, I've had issues on AMD rigs where the cards will stop mining. Like, and I've had a troubleshoot and I had to do a DDU to remove all the drivers and it just to get everything working again. It was like resetting everything back up. So if you can, my normal position, if you're if you're building a purpose built mining rig and you're going to host it like in your house or whatever, and you, you don't put anything else on it besides mining, if you're going to use windows. Um, and just what I've done is I've turned off the windows updates. Um, may, I don't like turning off updates. I'll be honest with you just because of the security issues when it comes to like zero days and stuff that are 
uh, fixed whenever there are critical updates because there's ex exploits and stuff that are discovered and then they put out critical updates. Sometimes it's not about just improving the OS. Sometimes it's just fixing broken stuff. Um, unfortunately, stuff after the version 18 higher our version 1800s and higher with windows it starts breaking stuff when it comes to mining um and there's thread locking and issues that happen so 1709 seems to be the most stable that i have personally found with the rigs um, that we deal with if you're dealing with windows so if you can keep it set to 1709 and then just disable um, your updates for your mining rig, then you're probably in a safer bet from just a consistency side. If you're doing this in your home computer and you're only working with a couple of video cards, make sure you have the latest updates, uh, mainly just for your ops sec in general. You don't want to have the latest updates that you can uh, to fix bugs so um, and potential issues with uh, security. So a long way about going saying that you may run into issues if you let Windows upgrade all the way to the latest version. I have five of the 1050s. Stop mining, cut power in half, all kinds of AMD dislikes. Yeah, 1803 on all, but some work with 1851, some with 1834. Yeah, AMD, I've just, that's the ones I've had the issues with, um, uh, with that. So the NVIDIA is always just, I don't know if it's just the way the drivers are built or if it's just a, a different development process when it comes to quality check, but. The drivers of NVIDIA have always been uh, seem seemingly stronger um, from a consistency standpoint. So, so on the multi miner here, if we kind of expand this out, we just essentially ran it. Um, we have, you know, this now reordered. Before I had a lot of just kind of coins scattered across the different selections. Now everything's kind of set up by the algorithm type, and this is really leaning forward to when we start doing reviews of new hardware, new cards is I wanted an ability to say, okay, here's some coins and here's their algorithm. Um, and then we can start plucking in new coins under the particular algorithm type. So you can see how many types of algorithms you could test. Going forward, I'd like to use this like in the space and give this to, you know, Kyle and, you know, Jay's two cents, all these guys that, you know, that aren't covering mining in any capacity, but when they realize that mining isn't going anywhere and it's just gonna be content, people are gonna wanna know, hey, how's that thing mine? Um, sharing that space with them, doing, uh, giving this uh, out to where they can just, they could download this, have their own wallets or whatever set up and not da do daily cryptocurrency mining, but just be able to test out and, you know, get out there and show what, what their configs can produce, you know, uh, versus ver various algorithms. So if we put it in the context of eTash, Equihash, which is by and large, all of this Equihash now is just in here for, symbolic testing reasons uh a6 now kind of rule the world of uh equihash um and then maybe in a future update here i do have um at least a tag that i'm working against um where i'm going to put in here like right next to the equihash algorithm i'll put in parentheses here that um this is ASIC mainly, you know so this is just for testing only just if you wanted to see what the kind of throughput a gpu can do um, but not you not I wouldn't waste time or money on Equihash mining now on GPUs uh, because ASICs really rule it. And then if you know of Zcash or Zen Zencash or somebody forks the forks the coin, gets the community to support the fork, and um, makes it to where Equihash has a modified version to where ASICs don't work on it, and then maybe Zencash will uh, become GPU compliant again. But um, Lara a two Z. Neo script, Grostol, Mirid, um, Kryptonite V7, and then Kryptonite X16R, X16S, uh, Lara Rev2, and uh, Lara 2Z. It looks like I got that twice, but um, there are. I, I'm open to suggestions here. Uh, we used to have Bolt work on here, um, but maybe adding that back in there. Um, and some of the other algorithm types. So that's kind of the next phase. We got 7.0 working. It's a good update, functional, um, but the next update is gonna uh, be an algorithm expansion. Like I'd like to really add a lot more algorithms to this. So right now 
we will start with just uh, we're going to test out this that was 20 minutes of kind of a long explainer um, but let's see what this 13 card 1050 ti can do so let's try uh, eth real quick let's do a measurement test on that now this is using claymore's dual miner the 11.9 there you can see all 13 GPUs popping up. First time you will get a Windows firewall. Add this as an exception as it's hitting an endpoint. I've been adding ones I mine like your menuing. Nice. JSFL. It's insanely fast. We've tried to lean it out as possible. You should update the enemy seven one dot seventeen x. Yeah, we can look into doing an update here uh, on it. Um, so this is the base. This is the base speed right now of these at thirteen or twelve point three. Now this I have not done any modifications. What we're going to do is baseline this, and then I'm going to do a quick uh, update on just overclocking some, and then seeing what we can pump these up to. We should be able to get close to fourteen on these on ETH um, equivalent. So. We'll let this go for a second. I'm going to keep track of this behind me on the whiteboard. It's not RTX day today. All right, we got 12.4 each. It's about 160, almost 161 mega hash, and we are at close up 846 watts. With no OC. All right. And you see the ambient temperature here. We're about 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Nope, wrong button. You get 50, You get 15066, huh? Yeah, and you can tell me your settings, Jay. Well, maybe just you try to use those versus troubleshooting it. But um, let's close that out. I don't know if I have the latest afterburner. Let's do that. Downloads, afterburner. You know, I like getting, I like doing all this stuff on the stream. I mean, I used to try to prep it all and then just, but you guys miss all the little things that I do. And maybe you have different approaches to it that's more leaner and faster. And we all learn and all can contribute. It gives you guys a voice to say, hey, cool story, bro, but try it this way. And then everybody learns. I'm going to load this up real quick. Oh, you just bang it straight to a thousand, man. I hear you. Power could stay at 100. Yeah, the 1050 Ti's, I don't see much change when I drop the power level on them. 
TDP on those are only at 50 because of the limitation of the external power not being a thing. It just can draw it from the from the actual riser only. Um, we're going to leave clocks alone. Let's try to go... Oh, screw it. Let's just try to go 1,000. Let's see. Let's see if we blow it up. It's got to commit it to all of them. When that depresses, it should push all those settings to all the cards. Or it will blue screen the machine. Wait for the program. And you see how I, I waited for it because what happens is, is when it's rolling through that, it's not crashing. It's actually trying to commit to 13 GPUs. So it rolls right down that PCI device ID and just applies it to each of them until it finishes. So you got to wait for it. It'll crash if it's going to crash. Otherwise, just wait. Um, let's see if this thing just right out of the gate um, can take it. And then... Now, not all these algorithms are going to take advantage of that bump in memory. On these 1050 TIs, um, I ended up picking these up for 139 bucks a piece. So pretty, pretty decent price. And this might be a hard lock here um, as it's trying to push the uh, trying to commit and it might do a hard lock. These might not be able to be successful at at a thousand megahertz. So this might be a reboot. I'm gonna close that. It's not. It's not working. It's gonna thread lock. Yeah, the threads are locked. We're gonna try 50. Yeah, you can change the clocks on the fly, but it, but the, uh, the way, uh, if you're way over it and the NVIDIA driver doesn't recover, then it'll, it'll just thread lock and just, it's faster just to restart. get back in here real quick and just set it let's try eight let's try 800 We'll work our way the other way. Usually I go start low and then go high, but we already started high, so we'll go low. Yeah, it looks like it took it. Let's come in here. Back to Ethereum. 
Later this week, too, I want to have a discussion with the uh, some of the EIPs, the Ethereum Improvement Plans. There's a few of them out there mentioning, oh, that just blew up. Can't handle it, boss. We may have to restart. It might have popped the driver, but we'll see. Let's try 600. I'm going to go down by 200 increments. These Zotax don't necessarily have the best. Did not like, did not like the 800. Now you have different quality. I mean, so Zotax a good quality. I've always had good pro good success with Zotac, especially on the higher thresholds on the memory side. But these, I believe, might be. I think all of the all the ten ten fifty Ti's were all micron memory. I think, but it's the ten sixties that have like the Hynix and separation. Let's see if that took that. Might have to restart again, but. This is mining, bros. This is uh, dialing in your settings. You can't have it just do what we're doing right now and just having it mine and not getting the full potential of the card. Or you can go through an iterative approach that we're doing right now to figure out what's good for your card. It looks like 600 is not. So we were probably thread locked or we were having an issue right here. We're going to go back to 600 and then see if it does. This is probably the result of um, causing an issue with the driver previously on that last crash what prices will go up in September I'm, us, I'm, a, I'm taking an assumption you're talking about the prices of cryptocurrency versus graphics card because graphics cards right now are decently priced we are making a micro center run today um, and I will tell you maybe if we can I'll try to go live like on Periscope or something um, in micro center if they'll let us but um We're going to check prices when we're there, just from a retail standpoint. The driver hates us. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, obviously you can see we're using the B250 Mining Expert. Neutral on the board, uh, you know, I'll give you guys like a five or six month, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about this like uh, separately in a different video, like giving kind of an assessment of the six months. But I'm going to tell you right now that I like the Asus Z270s, the Asus C370s, and H270s and 370s better than I do the B250 Mining Expert. I think they went a little, they went a little cheap on the Mining Expert, and I've had I've had some issues with the Mining Expert boards because um, uh, half the farm is is mining expert boards and I've the ones that I've had go out are the mining expert boards. The uh, uh I mean by and large it, it's worked fine but when I have issues I have issues. I mean like it, like it and I replace the board and everything works. So it's just weird. Um but the ones that work work great. Um my Azrock um H110 13 cardboards or great as long as you don't have a lot of grounding issues with risers. If you have risers that don't that have good solder points because your connections are very close. Um, I've had excellent, excellent. Uh, I haven't lost any of those boards. Let's just say that those, those boards have been working excellent. Uh, all of them that I have function have always functioned and continue to function. So I, I give big props to Azrock. Azrock was always the the company leaning forward in this space, anyways. I mean, Azrock put out the H81 Pro BTC, and before that, even the H61, which is way way old school for the people that have been mining, may know about that board. But let's try 600. Um, the H61 was the first one, but that's the first six card board. Before that, we were always using like old school. Um, boards that we could get four to five cards. Six card was like like mecca back then. Hubby Bubby, can you share with us what microphone setup you are using? Yes, I am using the um, Audio Technica AT2020. It's a USB microphone. It's like it's a very decent condenser microphone. It's USB based. So it doesn't need like a control board or any of the other cool fancy uh, switchboard stuff. I would call, put it as probably the top 
And I've had a few different mics. If people have noticed in this channel, I've switched out a few things a few times. Um, of this one, it seems to give me the best like studio level quality audio on live streams. And I, I'm not using any other software enhancement for the voice. Uh, it has the built-in compressor stuff and it's just, you know, uh, stream OBS picks it up fine. I mean, you guys be the judge, but it should sound pretty good. Let's try 600 on this. Prairie Riggs, do you take pics for your home insurance and coverage? Oh, does not like 600 either. These things do not have much overhead on them at all. I'm going to let this reboot, and we're going to try 400. Um, yeah, so, like, uh, I don't try... Uh, rigs come into the house, but I don't keep them permanently here very long. Um, they end up back out at the farm, or I'll use them for the studio stuff that we do here, but I try not to do too much mining at the house anymore. Um, back in 2013, 2014, when I wasn't running and had a farm set up, you know, they would be in the house and I think at my peak I had probably 13 rigs here and I had like power cords coming out of the you know every part that could have a 20 amp the Ravencoin community brought me here well hello from the Ravencoin community been, been a big uh, supporter of what they're doing as much as I can bring awareness to it I mine their coin um, I, I like the the path that the community's on with it, um, Ravencoin, I mean, just, it's unfortunate that the surprises and all this just FUD is out there in the crypto world when so much infrastructure is getting put in place in the background. And I mean, I could almost have an entire conversation with you guys on the fiduciary side of all the efforts that are underway with regards to like ICE, you know, the uh, exchange uh, and back BAKK, I think T which is uh, the New York Stock Exchange venture into cryptocurrency. I mean, there's so much back-end stuff going in, but there's a lot of uh, struggle in the back-end, too. Let's just check one thing before I go and play with that setting again. Let me see if we've destabilized something here. Let's see if it is stable without any settings changed. Um, where you, you got a lot of infrastructure. You got you know EFT reviews, CBOE, which is Chicago Board of Exchange, you got a lot of stuff going on in the crypto space, but you got a huge price suppression. And then you got this whole other mantra where the traders are going to trade and they're going to be doing it against heavy margin sets, you know, like, uh, come on, there it goes. I'm waiting for that DAG to commit. It was giving us a whole bunch of zeros. How to purge yourself out um, to where you can have like 100x margin trading on like BitMEX. And, you know, it's it, you're not taking custodial you're not taking custody of the coin. So now you have this whole virtual derivatives market being created around it. And it's kind of like crypto was kind of designed to be the counter to all that. Meaning if you owned an asset or you were trading against an asset, it was against a, a particular set of cryptocurrency. So if you had a hundred Bitcoin, that hundred Bitcoin is out on a chain and you could validate that. And, you know, when you get into an exchange world and they don't lock one for one trades with the exact amount of currency they have, now you get into some scary stuff that can occur. Um, because um, they're not allowing the true supply demand ecosystem to thrive um, and drive price because now they're able to just to der you know derive different um, you know it's not locked to a coin and that's danger zone so like that kind of crap's going on in the background and it needs to get squashed in my opinion because if you kind of do that then you're doing no different than like the housing and loan the, the mortgage and loan market stuff where you can ha sell an asset four times for the same asset and sell it to five people and there's nothing it's just there's nothing underneath it um and that's a bad that's a bad scenario so that that allows you to create create crazy price swings without having the 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 coins underneath them so yeah it looks like this thing's stable without um without any change here so let's go back so we know that it's not anything with a miner or anything like that Let's try to, maybe it's just not like in the 600. Let's try 400 megahertz overclock on them across the board. Yeah, so I mean, so the game, the game has been going on 
And I, it's like I can see it clear as day of what's going on with it right now, where you have this huge manipulation going on to try to keep price low, short stuff down. And the whole time you got people trickling in and just taking coin and ba banking it until the law comes down or something comes down to snap it to where you can't do like the heavy derivative non-correlated, you know, to a coin exchange. Um, and then, oh, now everything's going to be based on against a coin. And now, you know, people got scared and sold everything. And now you have this massive explosion of price because you are truly limited to what, how many cryptocurrencies out there. And if you have a massive market of buyers, um, because now it's the new hotness or the new meta or whatever you want to say, and now there's not enough coin out there in the market, it just makes the price go to the roof. And then you're going to have those guys that have been talking all the smack going, hey, guess what? I got a lot of coin to sell to you guys at this price now. Yeah, it's a big game. So how do you how do you keep around that game is you just hold what you can. You keep consuming and buying what you can. You mine what you can. You pay for your power costs and you just keep stacking up um, and then ride that wave up. All right, let's try 400. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. However, I do play in the market as much as I can to gain as many as coins as I can and make sure that you guys know how to partake in that through this kind of stuff. Mining mechanical stuff, upholding the network. All right. So we got 400. It's now getting to the point of actually committing. Let's see if it actually can write to the DAG and start processing some transactions. Well, I didn't even see ETC on Coinbase. ETC is on Coinbase now. Oh, we're dying out here. Cuda Air, Watchdog, Restart the Miner. Man, this thing. So it's probably one GPU as it starts to write that DAG. Um, and this probably just blew the, the miner again, but we'll see. We'll probably thread lock and restart here in a second. Yeah, I can see that it's... Windows will dump it if it doesn't allow it to close. Come on. Let me drop that process ID. Let's we'll see what PID it is. I can. Black Excise. Thanks for that Twitch Prime subscribe, buddy. Do appreciate that. All right, so this thing looks pretty, pretty heavily thread relocked here. Let's do this. Let's see if we can. Just do another restart. Yeah, 400 is not enough. So these things do not have hardly any headroom. 400 megahertz. So uh, now you can get in there and you can individually figure out. Now, so if like let's say you made the investment, you had something like this rig, and you're really mad that you can't overclock it and get more out of it. One of the approaches to that, now it's going to take a lot of time, and we're not going to do it on this stream, but what you could do is you could go down to an individual card level, and you could just overclock one card at a time. See where their limits are at. Um, and then label the cards and then set the clock appropriately to the card. Um, and then you would be maximizing your, your, your stuff. Now that is very, yeah, there goes the thread lock, um, or the crash on the watchdog service. And what it does is it times out and then if it can't figure it out, then windows will just dump it. And right now it's writing an error file. Um, and then it'll. Let it restart. So why that's figuring out its life, we'll come back here. So yeah, you could go through each card. I mean, 13 cards is kind of a pain to kind of go through that. If you have like a six card mining rig, I would do, I used to do that a lot with six card mining rigs um, to where I'd go through and I would figure out each card and I'd figure out which one's my weak card. And usually it's, it's set up based on the memory. Like if these all had, you know, like four of them had Samsung memory and then four had... Uh, micron memory and then the rest had Hynix memory sometimes those settings are a little flaky like the Samsung could handle a thousand megahertz but uh, 
the micron can't and that kind of thing. So it all comes down to, you know, how they have that set up and configured if it's able to support. So you're making me love my tent. Yeah, the XFX, man. You got if you can hold a thousand megahertz, man, you're you're in you're in a good position right now. So this is just trying to overclock. We might just move on right now. I mean, I'm gonna do one more overclock type on this, and then we're gonna leave it. We're gonna try a 200, and if 200 doesn't work, then I'm just leaving them at stock, and we're gonna go through the rest of it and see how the 1050 Ti's do. And I'm gonna put this up on YouTube, so if you guys missed part of it, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually edit this one a little bit, um, just to cut down some of it, but. A lot of reboots and stuff. No, not 299. That'd be weird. Let's do 200. Are you stable at it? Now, 200 should be a gimme. There should always be a bin level overhead. Like when they're binning these cards and putting them in. So I'm binning. All that means is they'll they'll build the, the Nvidia. They buy the chip. So that Zotac will buy the chip from Nvidia, right? Nvidia creates the chip, and then they send a whole bin of the chips. And then Zotac, when they're stamping those chips together. Uh, on the boards of whatever series they're going to build, like if this is like the the cheaper single fan 1050 Ti, um, it is because they take that series of chips, they'll put them in a bin, you know, they'll they'll test the bin quality of them, and if they can handle a little bit of overhead, they'll naturally overclock them from the base reference, and they'll put you know the the higher performing ones. And like the the two dual fan more like OC edition, right? So they kind of just set those in two different bins and pull the ones and then put the card together and then sell it to us. And so these things always have a little bit of overhead. They're usually not gonna be right up against what their what their stock settings are. So two hundred should be enough overhead. Okay, let's go for it. 200. And, you know, and in different cards, like on the Zotac, on like the Amped Extreme Edition, um, and the their Amped Editions, those are very high end bin uh, chips. Plus, they add a lot extra chokes and VRMs to that. Oh, there we go, 13. Uh, so I mean, we're not getting 15 out of these. We're getting about 13.1. Um, but it did take the 200 megahertz overclock. It took it from 12.4 to now 13.1. So we're getting more mega hash. You can see the net change of that on the total went from 160 to 170 mega hash. So we're getting 10 more extra mega hash on it. Let's take a look at how much power we're using now with that uh, minor overclock. We were at what? Uh, this is why we write things down. We're at 846 wattage on the power. And now I'll go ahead close up on this. We're at 878. So 880, let's just call it 880. So I'm going to take these settings and on the YouTube video, I'm going to make sure that you guys have it on... So I'm, I'm writing all what we're doing out here today. So when I upload this, I'm going to put that kind of table together for you guys can see for the people that don't, you know, TLDR, you know, too long, didn't read and just want to get straight to the numbers. Uh, you guys will have that information in a spreadsheet. So about 170.6 mega hash. Now uh, we're going to leave that at 200 mega overclock. We're going to carry this forward. I don't really care. Uh, what the base stock is we're going to leave it at 200 megahertz overclock on the rest of the mining results here um, and just get through it to see and i can hear the fan spinning up a little bit let's see if it changed the the power consumption we look at that so the fans right now are running about 50 percent and we about eight more watts across 13 cards so we're about to bust 890. now this is an rm 1000 x Power supply, it's a gold power supply. Uh, I think it's gold or platinum. It might be a. Yeah, it's RM1000X. I believe that's actually a platinum power supply. Um, so decent efficiency on this.
Would you advise long-term mining now with the ETH pillow and a uh, GTX 1080 Ti? I mean, I'm personally, I, I like Raven. Raven, you can get a lot of units on. Um, on a 1080 Ti per day, you might be able to get probably about 60, 70 Raven coin um, per per day on something like a 1080 Ti. Maybe a little less. Haven't looked at the difficulty. Difficulty's been doing a lot of swinging. The Raven coins are looking into, I think, deep gravity well right now to try to fix the uh, huge amounts of difficulty swing, which is dangerous if you're talking about a 51% potential attack. They need something to kind of mitigate the risk there, and they're looking into it. Um, but if you have a high amount of difficulty, you might only get about 20 coins a day, and low difficulty times, you're probably around 50 coins a day on a 1080 Ti. Um... But that gives you quite a bit. And then, of course, you know, Ubik or any of the Ether-based, you know, the uh, Etash-based coins. So, okay. So, I think we're good there. It looks like it's stable. It hasn't crashed on us. It's been going for about three minutes now. Obviously, long-term test would be ideal. But let's move on. So, that was the Equihat or the Etash uh, algorithm. We could try something like... Uh, Ubik, just to see if there's a change, because this is a lesser of a DAG. Um, let's do five on that, number five. So Ubik is number five. And let's just see if there's a change, uh, because the epoch level is going to be a little lower on this, just means that the size of the DAG is smaller on some of these other coins that are not Ether, because Ether started early, and it's 15 second block time gives it a... Um, a very quick epoch growth level, which just means the DAG file gets a little bigger and bigger on this there will be a fork around eight days on block yeah if you're talking about uh raven coin all right so let's take a look and see what this is so 170.75 so about the same exact uh regardless of uh, epoch level so you can see the epoch on uh, ubik right now is epoch 18 i think on ether we were and that's that's about mid screen here as you can see Right here, this is the epoch level. It's 18. That all that means is that the the DAG file is 1.14 gigabytes in size. That's what's loading into the graphics memory on the graphics card. That's why card. That's why you have if you had cards that were like two gig or three, you know, two gig cards, um, like the R9 to 70 two gig cards, and a lot of the folks that were mining with older cards that only had two gigabytes, those cards fell off of Ether. Um, at mineability, I think in like December of 16, um, maybe it was, yeah, it was 16, December 16, um, November or December around, uh, 2016, you could not mine with two gig cards anymore. Um, but on Ubik you can, so that is an e-tash currency that you can mine with two gig cards. And sometimes that has an impact. Uh, it has a lot more of an impact on AMD cards. That's why you have to have compute mode, which kind of changes up um, its ability to handle that DAG and um, does not. NVIDIA handles things differently um, and the way it handles the memory. So it's not as adversely affected by the epoch level. So. Looks like that's consistently the same. I'm not even going to measure that. I'm just going to put that across the board on the currency types. Um, so it would be essentially across all of them. I don't know if Pearl has any tweaks to that. We can take a look at, real quick at Pearl to see if it has any. This would be 150. Let's do number 10 because it's, it's the difficulty of the pool is the settings here. Oops. 10. So they have their their work difficulty levels set here with this pool. Oh, I keep trying to launch it instead of just typing. Uh, let's type 10. And this is between 150 to 800 mega hash. And all that means, if, it, if people don't understand what, if you have pools that set up how, what kind of work that you're going to work on. So like if you have a very high amount of hash power and you're trying to solve a proof of work problem, pools can set up how much of that workload uh, that you're going to work. How difficult is the problem? As you, if you have like eight leading zeros and you're trying to find the key to an answer, like 
a little bit of hash power, it will never get through that problem ever. So you're like contributing uh, zero effort of work, right? You're not, you're not helping anything really, to be honest with you. So what they'll do is they'll break that up and you'll work on just a portion that's a lot easier problem, like a four, a four leading zero problem. Um, and then you'll just go through that looking for the same key. So now you have a chance that you're going to find the correct hash the, to be submitted um, now by working on that smaller problem because you can get through the problem you can submit the work to say, hey, I'm done. I don't know if this is it. I don't think it is. And then it's going to go through. And then you have a, the small guy can compete with the big guy. If you had like 50 giga hash farm pointed at a pool, you can take on a lot more heavier workload, a lot higher um, difficulty. And then you could be working on the more harder problem set where a guy with a single rig, you and that guy in the single rig can still compete to try to win a block for a pool, if that makes sense. Hopefully that explained it in a, in a decent way. Um, it's a lot, there's, there's more technical detail that I could get into it, but I want to try to keep it kind of up higher. Um, and that's why you'll see some pools that automatically set that to say, Hey, go to this port and I'm going to send you work. That's fixed at this kind of uh, difficulty level. That way you, you can effectively contribute a more uh, reasonable share uh, to the pool. You're doing, you're doing, you know, God's workforce on this difficulty level. So it looks like uh, parole, same thing. So uh, that shows at least the consistency agnostic to epoch level across that coin or across that algorithm type, regardless of coin. All right. So let's just try it for giggles. Um, Equihash. Now, Equihash is mainly a... ASIC based uh, cryptocurrency now. So let's do 19 for Zcash. Oh, I chose that's I chose wrong. That's an AMD miner fell on my part. And of course it just like, yeah, no bro. It ain't happening. Like a read. All right. So 20, if we see 20, that's what happens if you click uh, AMD based uh, miner. So let's try 20 because this is an Nvidia based miner. Hubby Bubby, uh, 1080 Ti blower card. What temperature range would you suggest mining at? I wouldn't go over 80 Celsius if you can, if possible. I like keeping cards under 80 Celsius personally if I'm doing a long-term mining on it. There's DSTM Zcash Miner. You can see all the cards. And you can see the server just set our difficulty based on our potential hash rate. Essentially, we can submit this information. Like when you connect to a pool, it's going to give a leading kind of exchange of information and essentially you can print this to say, here's your minor version and here's what I'm bringing to the table. And it prints that list to the server. And then the server comes back and says, Hey, I'm going to set your difficulty to this because this makes sense for us. And then now you can see each card running and grabbing. It looks like a uh, hundred and eighty souls a piece. And it should give us a total. And there you go. There's your total. So about 2,400, souls which is super small um in equihash but from a benchmark standpoint it's a cool number to know yeah 69 celsius is great Let's check the wattage on this. Looks like it's holding. Close up. 919. We're, we're using a little bit more power. And you can see the 115, 116 volts. So we got this on 110. I do not have this plug into 240 right now. Wattage would be the same, but your amps would be down a little bit. So right now we're pulling 8 amp, almost 8 amps on 
110. And this is getting 2300 for 14 cards or 13 cards. It's pretty decent a uh, pretty decent uh, effective rate too. 16.18. That's a pretty good uh wattage effective rate. Or 6.18 souls to power usage. That's 10 1070 Ti effectiveness. There's a 55. Five. Use a little more wattage on that one. All right. That's Equihash. And then let's look at Z coin Lara to Z. Nvidia is 31. Thirteen threads. This will take a second. It's got to create a bin file, I think, for this one. Here we go. New multi miner's been pretty stable. Been pretty happy with it. See if we get a total here. Need to test the new miner on at least one had an error on ETC wallet. It was pointing to ETH wallet. Okay, on the ETC, I'll look at the code. You guys can always, if you guys download it from the GitHub, put in uh, put in the errors that you find. Like, you know, create a, you know, a request and just put in, a, put in a, you know, the bug finds and then we'll get it fixed. Helps us keep track of all of that. Looks like they're... Spin it up and should get a full count here. Consider it done, sir. There you go. Yeah, if you see bugs or something, we can get it fixed. Bobby, Bobby. So you have a collector's edition Titan XP. I mean, that's... You know, the unfortunate thing about like Titan XPs and stuff is, and it was the previous X Titans also was, you know, it was the pinnacle of like even over a, um, you know, a 980 Ti, and then this one's the the pinnacle over a 1080 Ti, but they they really lose their their value off the top because um, they're just marginally faster than the 1080 Ti, but it is cool from the cool factor. Um, I would just say take a look at I mean, if you go into eBay, eBay is kind of an, a decent indicator sometimes on the secondary market. At least other people are going to use that as an indicator and go in on the left hand side on the bottom where it says completed cells. So look up Titan XP and then when you do the search and on the left hand side, check the box of completed and sold items and then get an idea of the, you know, all the green, you know, completed auctions to kind of get a gauge of what the market's you know at right now now that can change in like two weeks right so like things can change pretty quick um i i'm very skeptical of trying to sell sell gpus right now um because people have that kind of aura of like oh i need an rtx i need an rtx we need reviews of the rtx in real world stuff we need the j's two cents the linus is the kyle the paul's hardware um reviews out there of throwing real games and looking at marginally what is the change what is the net change the brute force change in the existing drivers on rtx versus the 1080 ti's and if it's only 10 to 20 percent on most games they're going to see a lot of people looking at that price point of 1200 and going wtf bro for 1200 bucks i can buy two used 1080 ti's and i can put them in sli and i can run circles around an rtx and almost everything um 
maybe not ray tracing, but that's including if they allow the new DirectX allows ray tracing to be rendered on those 1080 Ti's through just its basic native functions and CUDA um, and not using the onboard cores that are available in RTX, you know, just trying to brute force, you know, um, the ray tracing scenes. Um, you know, if it's included from a software level, if it only if it's only coded and written for an RTX to leverage RTX cores on ray tracing, then you're you know you have to have an RTX to be able to take advantage of it. It's kind of like having a card that's compliant with a DirectX 11 versus 12. You know, even though if you have an awesome old school card, it'll never do DirectX 12 because it was never compatible. It doesn't have the instruction sets written for it. So it looks like this is holding off at about 601 to 590. I thought this thing would give me a post of total. Is it? Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. 5900. Um, 5960. So almost 6,000 6, kilo hash. So 6 giga hash on. Yeah, that's 6 giga hash. Or sorry, 6 mega hash. Jesus. Uh, six mega hash on layer two. I think that was layer V two. Let's see here. Not giga hash. I'm off by a thousand. Oh, there we go. Finally, it gave me an accepted share. That's what I was looking for. So seventy six. A little more. A little more than that. So seventy six forty six. Let's look at the wattage here that we're looking at. A lot lower. 456. So that is not using as much power. It's using about 3.5 amps versus almost 8. So it's about half. Half the power usage right now. That was a shit show yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was rough, man, watching that. Thanks for that tier one subscribe, buddy, on uh, Sigthorn. Missed that almost. Uh, RVM is mad about 20. RVM mad about the 28 price. Yeah, so... Um, Nobody knows what it's going to do, right? I mean, until we get it in hand, we have no idea. What I tried to talk about yesterday is looking from a pure core count and the megahertz that that is at least disclosed from PNY's website and ASUS's website and looking at the actual speeds. Um, and then looking at the gigabit per second from the GDDR6, I'm taking estimations of what it's going to be. And I think it's only going to be about a 20 to 30% at max increase um, purely because of the IO per second, uh, increase of the heavy, you know, the memory bandwidth being a, a substantially higher. Um, and I'm, I'm predicating that on the 10 or the Titan V. So I'm looking at it, the Titan V has a little more overhead, you know, or a little more speed on the, on the HBM two than the GDDR six, at least from a total gigabit per second. So I don't think it's going to topple the 1080 or the Titan V, uh, but it should be pretty close on the 2080 Ti. So if it's pretty close, then it should be, you know, without the ETH pill, it should be close to 60 mega hash per card um, on ETH. 60 to 66 mega hash is where I'm going to be putting my bet on it. Um, and hopefully I'm pleasantly surprised. I don't think it will exceed that just based on the numbers that I'm seeing from the hardware side. And then, you know, with a grain of salt, taking a grain of salt, then Jensen's discussion on, you know, that it's highly overclockable. I mean, I mean, he kept saying that, but I mean, who knew, right? I mean, we don't know yet. So, um, provided they've underclocked it a lot and that it gives you a lot of overhead, I can see NVIDIA trying to do a sandbag on that to where, you know, if they have the core clock set right now to 1350, current core clocks on most GPUs on 1080 Ti's 
are 1600 1700 right core clocks so if they're if they're coming in and sandbagging it down to 1350 knowing that the overhead can get to 1700 they're going to look like hey look you can overclock it by 300 megahertz not that hey we just didn't we we kind of sandbagged it so you guys can get more out of it um so if we we're talking 1650 with those kind of numbers that 16 16 gigabit per second memory speed um with a high enough overclock um, you might be able to get, you know, if you can get the memory 20% more, you might be able to bust over the, the Titan V and memory speed. So, um, our memory performance. So if you can, then something with a proper overclock, you might be able to get 80 mega hash on ETH on Ravencoin's translation. I can get my Titan V to almost 40 mega hash on by itself on Ravencoin. Like it bounces between 32 to f- almost 40 mega hash when it's overclocked, right? Um, and I feed it more power. So if the with the TDP being 285 um, TDP on the 2080, it looks like they've choked. They've given enough chokes and VRMs to be able to handle a lot more power. Um, that's probably to help with the overclocking and make sure it's stable and has enough juice. Um, provided the cooling's decent enough, um, I'm going to be interested to see you know what can be achieved from somebody like Gamers Nexus and those folks that can really juice it up. Um, but for the price point, man, 799 is what the 1080 TIs came out at 799. If this is, I mean, $1,200 is like crazy talk. Even if they get them down to a thousand dollars, you're talking Titan XP level when it came out. So anyways, I'm not going to go on a tirade on that. I, I kind of just did, but 7,600. So there's your performance on, I think that was, let's go back up and see which one that one was when I clicked it. Lara to Z. From Z Coin, um, Z Coin, uh, Lara two Z, two Z. All right, let's check Feather Coin real quick. Now that's going to be Neo Script. It took over the beloved. The beloved 33, which used to be Ubik in the old multi miner. Yeah, I was surprised. I kind of, I kind of wrote a, a, a tweet and a, uh, a comment under the Nvidia. I think I don't know if if it was mine or somebody else's video, but I wrote a comment that said, you know, I'm really surprised they didn't take they didn't take that platform. If you're gonna have an hour and a half. Uh, presentation and you spend an hour of the hour and a half presentation on selling a new feature because that's essentially what was happening they started the whole thing and went into a dissertation on ray tracing and why we should care about ray tracing and then went into pre-coded demos of ray tracing functional functionality to show it on and off Um, it was an hour-long pitch on ray tracing of why you want this in your life and why it's cool and I, i mean i have no problem with ray tracing it looks cool it's pretty game, um, but let's look at the target audience. If all gamers, by and large, these days are doing multiplayer games, so we're talking Fortnite, we're talking uh, PUBG, we're talking a lot of multiplayer type of games, and multiplayer games are super, super predicated. Not we like pretty graphics in multiplayer games, but it's more on the gameplay and stuff. How does it handle, you know, net code, net traffic? With rendering of graphics, uh, larger distances, um, higher floral ability, you know. So, like, if you're in a if you're in a PUBG world, and look at that boo, didn't get accepted share. Here we go. I was wanting to get. Uh, I think that's just on one card. Let's let this keep going. Um, here we'll come we'll come back to that. I'm gonna go back to this. I'm trying to make a point here. Uh, it. They had an opportunity to say, here's how this performs, and here's what this is going to offer in an advantage, and then here's some AAA titles, and here's the brute force of what this card's going to provide. You know, just out of the gate, we have this ray tracing, so you have this cool feature that's not in these other cards. Got it. Check. The other sales point is, by the way, this card's also 30% faster on brute force. They kept saying it's, it's factors. It's 10x. Well, 10x on ray tracing. Got it. But is it 10x on raw performance? Probably not. Based on the numbers that are out there, it doesn't make sense unless there's an entire set of instruction sets to handle some of these games in that way. So what's the raw performance? No kidding if I bought it and put it in a computer on, let's say, a benchmark you know, computer, uh, 
you know, uh, 6,700 or a 7,700 K, maybe a Ryzen five and a Ryzen uh, seven, you know, take four platforms, lay it in there, 16 gigs of Ram, solid state hard drive, 850 watt P2 uh, power supply. Here's the settings. Here's the setup. Here's the raw performance versus 1080 Ti, Vega 64, RX 580, 1070. You know, here's why you care. Here's why you're going to spend 1200 bucks. But they didn't take that opportunity. And what's going to happen is they're going to they're giving that opportunity up to communicate that message to uh, reviewers. Ultimately, you know, Jay's two cents, all those those folks that people go to to look at, like, what's the game performance? Uh, the blog folks, the people that are doing the blogs. Right. So, uh, you know, the I don't, I don't read a lot of game blogs anymore, but the, you know, Z, I mean, nobody even looks at ZDNet or, or ZNet anymore but i mean any of the tech blogs that are out there and the different tech sites hard forums let's just say uh and go through anadec forums and do the testing and give you the eight pages of here it is on shadow of mordor or, here it is on this here's it is on this the, they gave that opportunity to have a story and have a have a conversation with the gamers at GameCon, gamers con to to say here's why you here's why you want this card but instead they got caught up in the new feature Right. And it's, it's weird to me as a developer, you know, and developing content and, you know, also trying to sell it into the customers. Um, you want to take those opportunities and say, hey, here's what it, here's what you care about. You care about the speed. What's the change? What's the net change? You know, it is faster. It maybe uses maybe a little more electricity because you look at the 1080 Ti platform for Pascal and you look at this new one. It has a TDP of two, 285. I'm going up. And maybe it's required. Maybe the ray tracing and the new cores and the 78 trillion transistors and whatever else they were trying to sell in there is a bigger, you know, requirement on power. But what is the net change? Why is somebody going to spend twelve hundred dollars? Why is somebody going to pay forty percent more for a GPU? Like there has to be a net turn on that. And a lot of us went out and just bought it, right? I mean, there's a handful of people. I mean, they're probably going to be out of pre-orders, and that's probably what they're counting on. There's less is more. More sells initially, and then you're gonna have a lot of PO'd people of like, holy crap, this thing's actually slower, right? I mean, that would be a horrible, horrible situation, right? And I hope it's not. The math doesn't make sense based on what I see on the card, from just a core count, a throughput. DDR6 should be absolutely faster, but is the driver support going to be there? Does Microsoft getting involved when it comes to the driver development on the new DirectX? Is there going to be bugs with that? Probably. Um, it's going to be the first iterations of the games. How many games are going to take advantage of the ray tracing stuff? There's a handful of titles that obviously we see that's that's coming out with it. But those kind of things that matter to gamers at that that uh, that audience. And I know this is a cryptocurrency channel, and I'm going to test it with cryptocurrency for sure, right? We've ordered, we already ordered two, and uh, BBT Todd's ordered a couple, so we're going to have at least four of the cards. And then I had Gigabyte reach out and say, hey, we got some samples that we're going to be sending out. I don't know if I'm going to be part of that sample crew, but at least now they're communicating with me because they're seeing kind of probably, holy crap, man, we sold $300 million in freaking GPUs to crypto miners. And there's a whole handful of channels that cover it. Luckily, Gigabyte, uh, Gigabyte and MSI have actually reached out. I have emails. I copied part of it in my Discord and put it in there where they said, hey, we got some samples. We're going to send them out. We're going to work with you guys on the address. That's the first time I've ever gotten from a, a – and I've talked to Roy Taylor, vice president, uh, executive vice president of AMD. I have communications with all these guys, and they're just like, yeah, sorry, we don't send them to the uh, crypto guys, you know. But when it's that big of a bottom line and there's that big of a swing price swing and then people stop buying GPUs, they're going to be like, oh, crap, maybe the crypto guys will want them, right? Because they're going to want to move some GPUs. But we're going to give you guys an honest review. It's going to be live. You're going to see me like look at it and say, hey, you know, this is kind of good. This is kind of crap. You know, it's and it's probably not going to be on the based on the hardware. It's probably going to be the drivers at the end of the day. You know, we know on any of this stuff, the drivers usually end up killing it for us. But um, the hardware by and large is pretty decent. But I ordered both the uh, the 1080, uh, the the 280 Ti and the 280 OC, and I got the EVGA versions. So we did a we went to EVGA and just did a pre order through them. When we crash here, we all crash. Yeah, everybody fills it. I mean, it's the supply line, right? Uh, NVIDIA is supplying up the GPUs. We're supplying the hash power to a network. If everything's down, everybody hurts. Um, and it's a, it's an ecosystem, right? So 
44, 44, uh, let's see, 4413. This is NeoScript. Um, and we're going to capture that real quick. Let's take a look at the power. Do you guys even like this? I mean, do you guys like that I even do these these ones on the these GPU or you know the testing? Is this boring? I, I'm just a dork like this. I like seeing results. I like seeing I you build a 13 card rig, you put it together, it puts out this. Like it's a factual thing. Like I plug this into a network, it gives me a hash result, I get coins. It's that simple. And I'm using this much power. It's the mechanics of it. Maybe I'm just a dork. I don't know. I know so. We'll just call that 4,400. All right. Yeah, you like that, Sean? I got the got it close. I sent you an email earlier. Your stuff's on the way, man. I took a picture of it and everything. You got your tracking number and all that stuff. All right, so 4,400. We're just going to call it 4,400. I know it's kind of dipping around 4,404, um, but looks like that's what it is on NeoScript. And that's back up to 900, 900 watts. So, Grizzo Twitch. Never got the GPU bosses mentality out of GPU miners. We must account for uh, two thirds of the. You know, I don't know what the exact sales count is, but anybody that's been watching the channel for a while knows that I went to CES this year and I was able to get and have a conversation with Jensen and we recorded some of it and it's on one of my videos. So if you look up my CES video, I think it's on the second or third CES video on YouTube. If you guys want to see that, you can see the part of the questions that I asked Jensen directly. It was right after the NVIDIA event that he, he got on stage and talked through all the stuff at, uh, at CES, I was able to get up there next to the stage and he walked down and I was able to kind of corner him and talk to him and we recorded it. Um, and I asked him point blank about the GPU miners and man, he didn't want to touch it. He did not want to touch that conversation. Let's go ahead and kick this off. This is a uh, Digibyte. And this is Mered Grossel, I think. Let's see here. Let's let this run for a second. Um, and I'll go back to this screen. So anybody watching that, uh, it's on that CES video. And I asked him, I said, Hey man, I, I, I try to get bbt todd was following me and he was uh, had the camera on and i'm trying to talk to and then todd kind of got around and got a couple of the questions when i was talking to jensen and i asked jensen point blank i was like hey man uh, carter from B uh, bits be tripping we're a cryptocurrency mining channel i know you don't have a lot of time but i just got a couple questions for you i know that you're probably not ready to talk new gpus but just wanted to ask you you know do you how do you guys see the supply chain effects of cryptocurrency mining. And if you look at the time when I asked him those questions, this is like the second week of January, right? Crypto was just right through the roof at that time. Um, and that was at its peak this year, right? Like it, it was down from December. So sediment wise, we were like, okay, we're at $17,000 Bitcoin, $16,000 Bitcoin. Um, but crypto mining was on fire. A lot of people bought a lot of stuff in December. A lot of things were still out The The supply line in general was was gone and you know he just didn't want to touch it he didn't want to touch the question didn't want to you know wouldn't acknowledge the fact that crypto was even a thing um and just like hey i just said what i was going to say and that's all you're going to get from me pretty much and you know have a good day you know it was very he, he had an opportunity at least to have a conversation he's not gonna he's not jensen's not gonna have a conversation with us right it's gonna be pre-scripted it's gonna be reviewed it's gonna his lawyers are gonna have to look at it like because if we had the exclusive the ability to get him to talk anything on it, why I'm not going to sit there and just like hold on to him and be like, oh, well, you said I'm just going to relay the information. Somebody like one of the tech review channels are going to pick it up and then they're going to take that content and they're going to do whatever. They're going to like, oh, well, he said this on Bitsby Trippin's channel and it'd get us a lot of exposure, but in the wrong way because it would be trying to manipulate the message and people are going to read into it too much and. I'm trying to just get, you know, somebody that definitely has tactical, um, 
a, a tactical uh, execution of decision making for a company and a progress of, of forward leaning of what he can convince his board and the shareholders to go to you know, wrap around the you know this ecosystem of GP miners. You know, because regardless of, of a, AMD or a six coming out or whatever, there's always going to be GP miners. It's the same reason why Bitcoin will never go to zero because there are people that will still buy it no matter what governments can come in and try to ban it or whatever exchanges could close down. People are like, cool. How can I still get Bitcoin? There's going to be an entire viral market that is always going to still buy it. Right. And still use it and still functionally use it because it's been that way since 2009. And we know that it functions. If you take away everything I can still right now use my phone to transfer Bitcoin to somebody and that exchanges value. We believe in that value because between the people that I am uh, would be exchanging with, if it's a friend, if it's, if it's a family member, we all know that that exchange and transfers a value to us. And that, yes, we can spot price that value based on the current exchange rates out there. Before there was major exchanges, there were always decentralized exchanges. We know decentralized exchanges work and are extremely hard to shut down. So you always have an ecosystem there. So there's always going to be, with an ecosystem like that, you're going to have people devising new proof of work methodologies on, uh, it's going to start with CPUs, go through GPUs, and then potentially if it gets critical mass, get as much as possible to ASICs, unless a coin and a community says no and continuously forks the cryptocurrency to be ASIC resistant, right? So... Bottom line, there's always going to be a GPU market. And that's part of my argument is saying that there's always going to be an ecosystem of a grassroots side of GPU marketing. Like people are going to, it's a part of the ecosystem, bro. It's going to be part of it. So, uh, this 1050 Ti, you guys got me on my, got me on my tirade. Uh, let's see here. 1050 Ti on, I forgot which coin we were. Is this Grostal? Let's check the power on this real quick, and then we'll come back to what the output is. 850. So 850. Man, this is all over a little bit. So let's just call it 858 because I'm seeing it go up to almost 860. Oh, I didn't even hit 858 yet. 855. It looks like about 22 mega hash per card. Yeah, bingo, NDAs would have to be in place. I mean, yeah, so I mean, you can, without an NDA, you can sometimes ask just off-the-cuff questions and people will give you an off-the-cuff answer. I mean, certain CEOs are going to do that. Elon Musk is like perfect for it. I guarantee you when Marcus Marquis went there and did the factory review, if anybody follows anything with Elon and uh, Marquis just did an a interview on YouTube with him, uh, there's a two, 297, 297 mega hash. Um, he was giving them a lot of information that would normally be under an NDA. Like here, here's functionally what we're going to do and make a change in a, in our supply chain, you know, like things that affect all kinds of stuff downstream. And Milan's just, he's a transparent dude, man. I mean, I like that. I think he's just working his ass off and he needs another person. If Elon ever sees this, bro, I'll, I'll come be your number two, man. I'd, I'd hate to give up my family of, uh, of cryptocurrency mining, and all that kind of stuff, because I, I really love you guys, and I, I I like the stuff. But man, if I get, if I would get the opportunity to be like an Elon number two, I think I got it in me. Somebody 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 sent it over. I got their work ethic. I know how to develop. Two ninety seven. I think that's Grostal. I got the I got the background. Let's see here. Digibyte. I'll tweet as much though. And what power? Oh, did we start, we weren't. I got the power. What was the power? It was 850, right? 50 Almost 300 mega hash. That's actually pretty good, I think, for for the power. I don't mind Digibyte that much, but most miners game while mining. Yeah, I'm a I, I gamed last night for like four hours. 
Majority of Ho Chi Miners are gamers. Sounds like he's wrapping around the AI and NVIDIA expanding into that market. Oh, they're knee deep in the AI. They're trying to do run the machine learning setup. They want they're competing with a few other people in, in that space though. They got Google. Google has some of their own hardware. You got uh, a lot of ERP systems um, that are moving into that space too. You got SAP. You got Oracle. You got. Um, you know, uh, Hortonworks, you got all these different, uh, companies that do, you know, Hadoop, uh, and try to do a map reduce stuff when it comes to database architecture and, and move into that, you know, different ways to approach, uh, machine learning. Um, and you know, NVIDIA is trying to get in there with just big hardware in that space and that's fine, but you know, don't forget, you know, build a division, bro. Here, growth stole that digibyte. Let's do uh, Crypto Knight 7. That's 30, number 37. And it blew up. So this one will probably end up having a problem because 13 cards and th 13 cards. I think it has like a hard limit of 8. Like it does not like... 37. We'll have to go in there and see if it's actually in there. Yeah, it's running it. There it goes. Yeah, blew up. Boom. So I have to probably come in here and configure this. Let's look in here. Let's see what it, let's see what the details are, boys. I bet you if I dropped it to like eight cards, it, it would run this fine. But it's probably just like, yeah, no. Too much, bro. Too much. XMR, NVIDIA. Let's take a look at this, uh, this config.json. Let's open this. All right. Background, false, colors, true. Donation level, 1%. Threads, 20. Blocks, 240. Affinity to CPU is false, which is correct. Let's go into NanoPool, and it has information there. Yeah, so it's not it's not limiting and maybe it's not under the config.json, maybe it's under I don't think it's under start cuz I think that just calls the XMR Yeah, it just calls that XMR Nvidia. Uh so there's probably some more configuration that I have to do in here and in, and go in here and set the uh threads and the index to be at the right factor to uh to support 13 we're not going to get into that that's like its own video one that i want to go through a few iterations probably not wasting your time and then just give you the answer to so we're going to skip xmr for right now on 13 cards yeah google and ibm ibm uh i mean i'm pretty familiar with ibm's stuff i went to the ibm think 2018 this year did some of their workshops was actually coding and their blockchain uh, hyperledger. I went through their hyperledger course um, to become a, f a good understanding at least on how to deploy smart contracts within hyperledger and the uh, hyperledger fiber, uh, you know, fabric and that. I like to know their offerings. I don't have any problem at all with any of these larger companies getting into the space. Anything that helps awareness and education into the cryptocurrency space and helps vet out the use cases, I think is good. It helps adoption because I think of the eventualities, all of them are going to come back and go, hmm, do we want to continue to build platforms on this or should we just leverage what's already there and working? You know, I think they're going to come to that eventuality, uh, but they need to go through those steps. And they need to build it out and get it to understand. And then when they start to really look at scale of like, hmm, maybe I can write this cool code that I'm writing in my sandbox and then I can go deploy it on a, on a public network. Um, because now we understand the way provident, the providence needs to occur and the governance of that and all that kind of fun stuff. So I am totally fine with everybody just going through the discovery phases of that. It's like a Demetti. No matter how, how many people try to do things, they still end up stuck and having to do a Demetti cycle. Everybody does. And they don't realize they do. It's kind of like wax on, wax on, Mr. Miyagi style. You don't, you're don't you sitting there sanding and painting the, painting the finish. Don't realize you're learning the discipline of the control 
of, uh, you know, whatever movements you're going to do. You know, you need to discover it yourself. Uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, Kryptonite in general is going to just not work on 13 cards right here without some proper configuration. I'm going to try... So that is Crypto Knight uh, V7 and is not going to work. Crypto Knight. Let's try. Let's go back to enemy. Let's try number four. Number more first. 52 on X16R. Just let that kick up. And I'll talk through uh, those cycles. So what I was saying about Demetti. Um, everybody goes through a, like a Demetti cycle. It's define, measure, explore, uh, implement. Oh, so it's define, measure, explore, development, implement. So that just means that you're going to define your requirements. You're going to explore once you once you figure out like what you want to do. Like okay, let's explore some options here. And that's when you kind of like you write up like your uh, your basic as is and to be. You know, here's what I'm doing now. Here's what I want to do. You build those articles, you get those kind of things together and then you start measuring it. You go, okay, now that I know kind of what I want and I've seen kind of a depiction of that, maybe a graphic or a screen or, you know, design, how, why do I care about it? What are the numbers? What am I trying to get out of? Am I trying to save money? Do I want a cycle time faster? Do I want a root cause analysis? Cause I'm tired of things breaking all the time. You know, you go through that explore phase. So you go to that define measure explore oh so the measure you kind of do that beforehand i got ahead of myself you do the measurements first like you have to have a reason of what you're going to explore right so you're defining a requirement you measure uh why things suck or you want to change you know maybe you're paying more cost or whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's software or hardware this works with everything it works with like doing your freaking laundry bro like it doesn't this whole entire process is the same thing it doesn't matter so you start figuring out the, the, you know, I'm tired of doing this and it happens every Thursday and whatever, you know, you go through and you figure out your, the, uh, measurement of that. And then you start exploring, what am I going to do? You know, do I want, do I get up and just do laundry every Tuesday? You know, how do I break the cycle? Right. You go through this in life in general. Some people have wrote, written a methodology around it and try to sell it to developers. Right. But in reality, you go through that define, measure, explore, and then you develop. So you either development or you're, you're, you're going through that phase of like, okay, I'm making the change. I walked outside and the weeds are all over. I'm going to make that change. I'm going to pull those weeds. Right. You start making all those adjustments and then you kind of, you go through this kind of iterate. Now, how do I sustain it? Right. You implement it. You teach other people it. You go through this sustainment phase and you just keep repeating and repeating and repeating and maybe fixing. And maybe at some point you go back into define. Like, oh, crap, this thing sucks and I have, I need to go change it. So that's kind of all. Everybody kind of goes through those different those phases. And um, it's just like everything in life is to Medi, no matter how you spin it. It's just at some point you figure out when you want to do something change. Thanks for that subscribe, uh, Jabin. I can barely see your name, brother. IKB. We'll just call you IKB. Do appreciate that. A little self help discussion. Afternoons with Carter. 37 mega hash right now. And this was on uh, Evermore. I think we're getting a little faster on, uh, on Enemy. And I think enemy they said there's at 1.7 or 1.17 version. So on Nevermore we're at 37. And that's 023. Let's try enemy 1.30. Could probably update the enemy. We'll do that 1.7 in another release, but let's do 53 should start us on enemy. Eek Ben Lars. Pronunciation. There he goes. Eek Ben Lars. Thanks for keeping my... Uh, keep me straight, bro. Lars. It means I am Lars. Dutch, I guess. How's everybody today? What's up, Hollerin? 
Yeah, Dutch. There you go. 54 mega hash. Now, I let this run for several days, or for several hours, rather, about like 18 hours, and it went up to about 57 mega hash. So we're going to keep this at 57. Let's take a look at the, the close up, about 840, 100, yeah, 57 mega hash so what it'll end up going to right now it's a holding about 54 let's get through this we'll wrap this thing up we're right uh, at almost wow an hour and 40 minutes man i talk too much um pigeon should be about the same There isn't much difference at all on uh, 16. I think it uses maybe less power, but it was never more. Probably could be using enemy for it. I don't know if enemy compiled 1.7 actually works with X16S. Mom late, yeah. 40 minutes. What time is it? It's uh, 5.10. I did an early start today, guys. I started early today, though, for work. I mean, I couldn't... Kids have been going to school. It's kids started school again, so they're, I mean, they're up at, like, 6, and then I'm up. And that is probably BBT to Todd, which it was. Because we're going to be going out to Micro Center tonight. 46 mega hash on so just under about 10 mega hash slower using evermore on x16 s about 830 watts i think that's what that was What's the quick and dirty on the new 2080 Ti? Quick and dirty is it's overpriced, I think, based on the stats, and it's probably brute force wise, just doing some basic numbers. It's probably only going to be a 10% to 30% brute force increase across the board on gaming, um, provided there's not any special instruction sets that are going to take advantage of the higher speed memory and all that. So I think it's only going to be about anywhere from a 10 to a 30%. On some games and on cryptocurrency, probably just under what the Titan V does. So I'm betting 60, 60 to 65 mega hash max um, out of it um, on Ethereum. Just based on numbers. That's all speculation. I have nothing to back that up, by the way. I'm just looking at the numbers from that's been produced from a CUDA core standpoint and just looking at the raw horsepower that's going to be coming out of it. Because, you know, mind you, none of the cryptocurrency stuff is going to be optimized for any of that other core stuff that's coming on the ray tracing side. Like nothing. Like it's going to be dormant. It's going to be sleeping. The tensor core, the ray tracing cores, all that stuff's going to be asleep. So it all comes down to CUDA core and gigabit per second bandwidth and clock speed uh, on what that new... Uh, 2080 is going to be and i think it's i think it's overpriced by probably a couple hundred bucks it really should have came out at like 899 that should have been the space price there shouldn't have been the you know founders edition at 200 dollars premium they should have came out and said hey it's a hundred dollars more you know just it's you know different times stuff's expensive you know a harder to produce gddr6 is expensive you know our core costs are higher i mean just come out be honest bro you know and we want to maintain a 17 percent margin <laughs> you know i mean like like, we need to make money to, to, to keep building cool stuff for you guys. So, you know, we got to pay shareholders. We got to pay this. We got to pay this. Yeah, you're going to pay $899. But, you know, like, coming out at 1200 I mean, like, did you spend too much on ray tracing tech? I mean, just because it was out there and you went for it and you spent more money on it? I mean, well, what's the story? Like, why is it why is it a 40% premium on top of an old existing architecture? You know, when you just added essentially a feature that looks cool, but... You know, that's what it is. 181 mega hash. That's what we're getting on. I don't even know which one we clicked. 181. I 
think this is Vertcoin. Is that fast for Vertcoin? I don't follow Vertcoin. Yeah, 48% premium in, in, in UK. If you're putting out a 48% premium, that thing should be about a 60% increase in hash. I mean, like, a 60% increase across the board. I mean, like, it needs to be, like, an entire, like, okay, I just went from a, a 6800 Ultra to, you know, uh, 7800. You know, like, like, huge leaps change of tech. Clawing back 10 years of R&D cost. Yeah, I imagine there's an equation somewhere in there that's causing them to charge a huge premium. Are they going to do some kind of crazy thing where they're going to set the they're going to set the MSRP really high and they're going to play this whole discount game, and they're going to discount it down to like now the price is seven ninety nine, forty percent off. You know, it's all about frontline price bull crap. Right? You know, like can you can you create a huge margin pool adjustment by putting a huge premium out there and then discounting when you go to your three tier sales people. Cause you got uh, the whole system is a three tier sales system. So three tiers, like what I had in Andrew Bush when I was a pricing analyst there and it, it, you create uh, structures to make sure there's liquidity for everybody that plays in the game. We'll let Vercoin go for a minute. So NVIDIA, NVIDIA builds a chip. They sell it to a third party, uh, you know, like a producer, like a like an Asus company, you know. So the, the core chip's going to be a certain price. And then they're going to say, hey, if you're going to... And then they build a reference version of that. And they say, hey, you want to add a new bezel, some different whatever, make yours distinctly different than our reference and sell it under a different brand name, that's fine. But essentially it's producer, supplier, slash wholesaler, retail than us right so it's a th they're, they're a three-tier system and in that three-tier system if you stack it top to bottom the producer is going to put out a raw cost we call it fob cost it's it's a cost to what it costs to create like they're in the fob cost you have essentially shipping um kind of buck you know tied into that and then you have essentially what's your core uh roi that you're trying to get back if it's a 36 month plan or whatever your core working cap needs to get to to pay for all the r d that it just cost plus a little bit of margin of your time right so that's going to be a core fob cost and then they're going to sell it to a supplier and the supplier whatever the margin pool is um and mind you my data from like beer times were real old but if i was to say uh you know and back in the day if i built a 12 pack of you know bud and it was eight dollars nine dollars per 12 pack i put two of those in a box you know um not even that it's probably about six bucks right so twelve dollars for two cases and then i send that to a wholesaler wholesaler is going to make margin i'm going to make margin because in reality it cost me six bucks i'm going to sell that to, you know so it'd be twelve dollars for the whole i'm going to sell that to them for fourteen dollars i'll make two dollars per case and then they're going to sell it to a retailer and make two dollars per case right and then they're going to the retailer is going to pull that out and now that total cost is maybe 20 bucks um you know 18 dollars actually then that retailer is going to take those two cases out and they're going to sell them on a shelf for two separate things at like 16.99 a piece right so that's 32 bucks so somebody somewhere is making some margin so it all comes down to like who's making it and is it really nvidia or are they trying to make it good for the mid level to where they can have this this depth for discounting so if nvidia is actually building the processors and all this stuff and their actual core cost is at you know minus you know so you have manufacturing costs on a gpu on a 2080 let's say hypothetically it's 400 dollars, and it's probably a lot less than that construction costs probably a lot less than that um and then all their r d costs is like it's an 80 20 split right so if they're selling it to the suppliers at, um, they sometimes will sell it to them for like a thousand if they're going to sell it for twelve hundred. But then they'll discount and credit them. So on every unit that they sell, if a supplier sends it to a retailer and then the retailer sells it, everybody will have a discount pool to where up front they're going to charge them, but then they're going to every unit that they sell they'll do like a sixty forty split. So if they'll say, hey, I'm going to discount at two hundred dollars for now, that main core price is eight hundred. And then the retailer will go in and sell it for nine twenty nine to us. They'll now credit the whole entire pipeline money. So it all comes down to what are they going? What game are they going to play? And every company does this. This isn't saying that they're bad. This is just the way the system functions, right? But at the end of the day, what is the value added from us? Like, do we care about the price? We do. To a point, if it's amazingly better than the next thing. If it isn't amazingly better and they're charging higher, then that kind of sucks all around, right? So. We want to know the numbers. 
what justifies the price? And then how are they, is it going to be a game where they're charging it really high and then just discounting it low for us? And that gives us that illusion that we're getting a better deal. I much rather kind of go the uh, kind of like the way the old Saturn cars were paid. The cost is the cost route. It's like the cars seem cheap because they were cheap because they didn't put all this other BS on top of it. They say, Hey, the car's 14 grand. Like, Hey, do you have any discounts? No, the car's 14 grand. Instead of charging you on the sticker, $20,000 and then discounting you through rebates, $6,500. I mean, go, try to go buy like a new Hyundai or something, right? You're going to go in there and the sticker's going to be $24,000. And then they're like, Oh, but we got $6,000 in rebates. It's just a game, right? It's just to it's to create a uh, this equity pool to where sometimes people maybe won't ask about the rebate, and now this guy's getting all that margin, right? It's all it's all a game. So I'm trying to figure out their game because they did not give us enough information yesterday on how much better that GPU was going to be. They just try to sell us hard on a new feature. So that's my little last piece I'm going to talk about. Uh, 1080, 2080s. I should probably, I should cut like those parts out and just. Like, just say that for one video. Or maybe I'm just spouting and you guys don't care about that kind of stuff. But I feel it's relevant. Like, people need to understand on how, the, like, the back end works. It makes things more transparent. It makes it more easier. And then there's not so much all this marketing bullshit that we have to listen through. It's just like, bro, things have changed. There was a style to pricing and there was a style to execution. And all that kind of stuff's kind of starting to get played out. Information can happen instantly now, right? Like, like just get it out. I mean, we have the leader of the free world. We have Elon Musk. We have people that use Twitter, right? I mean, like Jensen kick it on Twitter and be like, hey, we got this new graphics card. It's going to be awesome, right? I mean, like information happens at the speed of a click. I like when you talk dirty. There you go, Whisper. All right, so that this looks like a vert, we're still on vert coin. Oh my god, sorry guys. So vert coin, I don't know if that's good or not. I don't really mind vert coin. I used to mind vert coin a lot back in the day, back in the uh, pimp OS days and 2014 March 2014. I had a whole thing on vert coin. I always liked the vert coin guys. We'll see your monocoin layer to Z. I think this is it, guys. I, I think we already did one of these, but we'll go ahead and try it. 60, let's see here. I'm going to put these in a spreadsheet. I'm going to upload this video. It's a two-hour video. People are not going to want to get through this. I'm going to have to add some timestamps on this one for sure. Mined it, sold it, never went back. Are you talking about Vertcoin? It's all about value proposition. And, you know, the thing with the Vertcoin guys is like the only value proposition I've seen is that it's, it's you know, they're just mining a currency. That's just a currency play. Uh, uh, and that's really it. Not really a store value play. Uh, I mean, I, I need to go back and give them give them a proper review, like like read through, like what's the roadmap look like? What's all that kind of stuff? But it was just, uh, you know, they, it's kind of like FTC. I really supported FTC back in the day. But it really, it really played the you know form of exchange and value only play, and not really trying to enhance the network. Not like what Ravencoin's trying to do with like add a an entire asset layer to their system. It's just not a currency play, right? So, like uh, Feathercoin, uh, uh, Vertcoin, they they could if they can start looking into some of these other projects and start trying to edge out kind of an edge of what. Or, you know, like, what is, what's the purpose of the coin? Not just exchange and currency. It's hard, it's hard to go in there and play the currency play. Because at the end of the day, if everybody started using a currency, the network would just crash. I mean, it's just, like, can't handle the volume, right? What's the TAPS? You know, what's the transaction per second? Can it, can the world network hold it? You know, that kind of thing. So if you're going to play the currency play, then you need to start talking scalability play. And that could be the lead-in for Vertcoin guys, um... LTC gets the benefit of being able to take in the, a lot of the lightning activity that happens on Bitcoin. Um, but that's going to be the kind of the play. So if the Vertcoin guys get this or anybody is a big Vertcoin person, like take this and respond to this video that I upload on YouTube about it. So we'll, uh, you know, uh, what's your, what's your guys' scalability play if you're going to be on the, on that game. So Monocoin coming in, it looks like the same 180. So mega hash news and essentially the back and same back in. Cool. So I'm going to put these in a spreadsheet. It's been a two hour video, almost two hour video. Hopefully some of this has been pretty decent. 
Oops, didn't mean to go large on that. You guys can see what a 1080 or a 1050 Ti was able to produce a 13 card rig. You'll see the spreadsheet. I'll put these all into a cool little pre spreadsheet. We'll have it in the video, um, and maybe I'll make a short version of this, and then I'll make a like here. Here's just the full cut. It's been a very stable 13 card rig. Yeah, I've been uh, been moving. Yeah, this this rig's been super stable. Short of us trying to play with the power settings, I mean, this thing looks like it only has about 200 megahertz overhead. Um, this thing has been rock solid, man. I got I got to give uh, I got to give Zotac a lot of props on it. I'll give you guys one last view of it with the GoPro. Um, let me switch over to that, and then we'll we'll wrap this video up. All right. Trying to get this set up to where, you know, that's the GoPro Hero 4. It's pretty decent. It's just the lights really wash it out. Yeah, hopefully you guys picked up something. I always try. I mean, I don't mean to get on tangents. I just sometimes there's just a lot lot to be said and it doesn't get said. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to add some more commentary on that. You know, and I try to distinguish, like, if, if I'm talking opinion, I'm going to try to tell you guys, like, hey, this is my opinion. But then there's certain things, like, that I've worked in and know and just work. It's, like, the margin stuff and all that kind of stuff, the way companies make money. I mean, that's what I did for years. You know, I just noticed this. Is, this looks a little... Maybe it's the angle, but... It looks a little off. Um, the uh, It just feels like I, I you know... Well, on that kind of stuff, I feel super comfortable with. I mean, I was a pricing analyst for uh, almost two years. Uh, I was responsible for the Northeast, the whole Northeast um, for energy There was five people that did it. I was one of them, and we just made the company money. That's what we did. It was a margin. It was, I worked on margin. I worked on pricing. And it was just like, you know, or discounts. I had a $500 million discount budget. Um, and it came down to make things make things that made sense. Try to set pricing up. What, what were people trying to get? And AB was one of the best companies in the world that did that kind of stuff, man. They just knew how to do stuff. They I learned a lot there from that kind of stuff. Um, and they got into a whole bunch of software development and and architecture and all that kind of stuff. Because I don't sleep, man. You guys, anybody who follows me and watches, I started streaming uh, some of the gaming stuff. The gaming stuff is, I think, critical to me being able to just release, you know, get my mind on some other thing that is not tech, right? And I could just play a game and have fun. I've always been a gamer. Love gamers. I need, to, I need to get on the gym game, bros. That's what I need to do. Stop sitting around playing video games and get on the damn gym game. That's that's like has to happen before I go on a cruise. So I got about six months for that too. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like, subscribe, share. Go out there if you see it on uh, YouTube. You know, kind, kind of give it a like. I've been trying to upload this stuff more to YouTube. You guys have seen like three videos from me in like three days. So uh, I'm trying to get onto that.